Yeah, hi. Um, so we've been on here before. I'd like to kind of give you an update on where we are, uh, basically on the use of stretchable and flexible hybrid electronics. And in this case, uh, particularly to capture human performance. And uh, as I said, Kasha, we're in Portland, Oregon, uh, very much a hub of human, human athletic performance uh, providers, such as Nike, uh, Adidas, USA, Under Armour, all of their innovation centers are here in Portland for, for good reason. So um, we're trying to take a reductionistic approach to performance monitoring. We're doing this by introducing, uh, we think, technology that will add to the improvement of trust in understanding data collected from athletes, because sometimes it, it isn't always uh, uh, inherently understandable in a lot of uh, IMU-based and other types of athlete monitoring. And we've, we think we've we're able to provide a system that basically meets uh, baselining and assessment expectations beyond what's available now. And as most of you are familiar, I'm gonna run through some very simplistic slides, but we have sensors that we, we take uh, uh, an analog signal from, we convert those to digital signals, and we can basically get data points from all over the body to, to basically monitor human, human movement. Traditional electronics are very rigid. They're silicon, copper alloys, plastic resins, FR4 boards, we know that. Um, as humans, we're a combination of bones, muscles, sinews, you know, blood, organs. And we think that the electronics needs to be closer to how we are as humans. Uh, and we think our, our metal gel helps to provide that, uh, that interface that is less foreign than the traditional electronic packaging. As you can see here, some examples of traditional electronic packaging and the overall aesthetic and fit is, is lacking. It's uncomfortable. They don't match body performance very well. And when they do, they're usually at the expense of comfort and wearability. So uh, we're trying to get away from this rigid form factor. I'll play you two very short films here showing you our stretch electronics in cycle testing. This is at 100% stretch. We've been able to stretch these in a laboratory setting through an independent uh, external entity that has cycled these to a million cycles without any reduction in the performance or the uh, increase in resistance. So you compare that to traditional uh, materials like copper meanders or uh, metallic uh, conductors, met condu metallic conducting inks, and you see a quite a difference in performance there over the course of, of stretching. Here's one of our strain sensors applied to a knee brace. You can see the LED output on the right, and you can see the, the graph of the resistance change with knee position. We think that these deformable novel circuit sensors, um, th this, this material adds to the ability to make novel uh, sensors and electronics uh, beyond what we've seen in the past. And to that end, we are endeavoring to bring sensors of that type to the human body. As you can see here, we have uh, an architecture that allows for basically a second skin type uh, device that when applied to the body can give us data depending on where we put it um, that's real time and, and highly accurate. Uh, we've had some great success with, with hand motion monitoring with the, the assembly on the right or on the left, excuse me. And with leg monitoring, it's a combination of IMUs and, uh, and our strain sensor. Back to the basics of who we are and what we do. We use a gallium-based uh, uh, metal gel. It's an ROH-compliant, non-toxic material. We can print this to just about any substrate, including EPTFEs. Traditionally, very difficult to print to, but we have able we are able to deposit this on these on these materials, and through a wide wide operating processing temperature range. And again, it it becomes in and of itself a linear stretch sensor in an elastic. Uh, carrier like TPU, but we can also uh, print antenna and other devices, capacitive fields and things like that with this. It remains in a fluid phase, unlike traditional inks. So as the deformation occurs, our material goes along with the deformation. And as long as you're not getting into any hysteresis limits of the materials that are put on, uh, our material will stay conductive and provide you those solutions. Some, some big eye charts here, but basically resistance change over time, as I spoke to earlier, compared to things like silver ink, you can see the blue and green bars representing uh, several thousand cycles and different strain rates. And you can see the resistance doesn't change over time. Whereas with our friends using silver ink, that resistance generally breaks down at some point in this case of the Intexar sample on the right at 2000 cycles. 2,000 seconds, excuse me, and that's at about a, a cycle per second. Just, just to let you know you have one minute left. 
Yeah, no problem. So we are approaching this uh, idea of body kinematics with uh, sensors for industrial ergonomics, VR gaming, sports performance monitoring, and clinical monitoring in, in a medical setting post-surgery or for remote PT. And again, this is the basics of our knee brace and some examples of how we can run this through an engine and then drive an avatar uh, to capture limb, limb kinematics. And we have this applicable to any joint on the body. And we can pump that into an app and provide this kind of information to anyone looking to monitor the body, again, for those varied applications, hand, shoulder, knee, elbow. If you have any questions, we'll be in the, uh, in the meeting room afterwards. My colleague, Andrea Olvera, and I will be there to answer any questions you have uh, regarding our materials.